South of Candlestick Point as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. The scene a short time ago, this crowd, they love their 49ers, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. And we're ready for football as the 49ers get set to do battle. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line with the Minnesota Vikings. Now the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breda. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Here we go, here we go. Here Following we go. the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll run for the first time with Tevin Coleman. Oh, he's got some breathing room. 23 yards the pickup there. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that, the nickel look. Five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little, and oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. Garoppolo on first down. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he's got this down to the 35. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Here we go. Black Ball eight. up to the 35 here now as they one. come up here on first and 10. Back. On first down, here's Breda. And he'll go down at the 28. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit hey, right go, here there. Go, here we go. On second down, a run with Breda. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Here we go, here we go. What do you need? He can't hang. He's not going to get me. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with Breda. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, well, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. Powerful running. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now the Minnesota Vikings coming back out as they get the football here. Now it's been over four decades since the Vikings played in the Super Bowl, and you don't know if this is going to be the year that they get back but there has not been a lot of talk about this Minnesota team. Double-digit win season and a lot of good teams in this conference, and I feel like they're a little bit under the radar. But top ten in both offense and defense. you got dynamic players on both sides of the football. And we'll see what this Minnesota Vikings team can do down the stretch if they can make a little noise. One thing's for sure, they've been very good at home this season. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, 
Got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Cousins. Blitz coming and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. On play action, Cousins. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Nick Bosa, he's the one to get him this time, and back-to-back -back sacks brings up fourth down. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking, but to me it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. Yeah, that's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and ten. San Francisco coming back out here, CD. This is a franchise that this year will end a five-year playoff drought. That's the good news. Go. Great record, but could have been even better, really. You think about some of the heartbreaking losses. Overtime to Seattle, a field goal at the horn by Justin Tucker and the Ravens, and then that real shocker against Atlanta, Week 15, Julio Jones, the touchdown, no touchdown right there at the goal line. And that's the one that we shouldn't have been as surprised, only for this reason. They were so injured, mm. so beat up, so many starters not playing in that game, and they took Atlanta to the limit, although I guess we would say Atlanta took them to the limit and found a way to win. But I do think that this 49ers team, with health in the playoffs, is dangerous as any team in the NFC. Once again, they run with Breed on first down. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. Here we go, here we go. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Garoppolo gives to Breda. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. go. That didn't Ready. happen there. That play got swallowed up. All day. All day. Throwing his Garoppolo on third down. He's got his man. It's Kendrick Bourne. So instead of fourth down, Let's first go. down. Well, so Let's much go. for winning the down, you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Right here, right here. Garoppolo now, first down throw. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. And the return will stop right around the 25. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Now we've got movement up front. And I think this is going to be on Minnesota. A false start penalty. And now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Cook following the penalty. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. 
Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And he finds Cook. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 25 yards that time. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. Cousins now to throw on first down. He'll dump this off to Cook. And he is down at the 48, a pickup of four that started at 148-yard line and ended at the other. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. To throw again on second down, Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the 6-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that go, go. puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there there's to move the sticks. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. Open man is Samuel, complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, go, able to go, stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They go counter with Breda, and he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football go, is not go. just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll try and run for it here. It's Coleman, and he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second go, down. Go, go. Twenty. Watch the car. Watch the car. Now it's Breda. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. That's what I'm talking about. Nice hit, boy. 
3-0 after one on EA Sports. Here we go, here An we go. extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Alert three, alert three. Alert three. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Garoppolo to his tight end, Kittle, for a Niner first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Here's Breida, and that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. It'll be a five-yard pickup there. So from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second go, level. The Niners on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and eight. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. Pass the 20. Got the connection here to board. They're able to convert on third down, and that go. sets up go. a first and goal. Here we, go. we always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route, well run, and the football, right on the money. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. That's a gain of seven, and we'll leave them with second and goal coming up. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, we're looking at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. They'll try to run with Breida. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to go, find go. a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third? And, and he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Debo Samuel there to make the grab. And the Niners are able to stretch their lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, 
Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? An opening there on that first down run as he gets this forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, people say bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them. Now a hit and a loose football. Let's go. Here we go. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing go, go, because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. On second down now, it's Coleman. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go here to the go, gap go. you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Garoppolo looking to throw on third and two. Taking a shot for Samuel. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop them a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play and that'll make it second and 12. Watch the pass. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. Cousins, that's to Cook out of the backfield. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. 
I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. A first down throw for Cousins. And this is Cook with the ground. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Yeah. Not only did we just see back-to-back -back nice gains, but we're also seeing the confidence rise, not just for the guy who caught it, but the guy throwing it as well. And these can these back-to-back -back catches here out of the backfield, that can set something up downfield in a later sequence, right? A lot of the time, it starts to draw the defense closer to the line of scrimmage. So to your point, show this swing pass, show this check down. Maybe later on, you heave one deep when you catch him close to the spot. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. The Vikings on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. Cousins the thrower. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he gets it down to the 48. Enough for the first. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing his cousins. This one taken in by Olabisi Johnson. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Cousins now seven of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. A give to Cook out of the gun. He'll be brought down on the 30 yard line after a gain of six. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Draw play. Cousins to Cook. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The Vikings on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And uh, who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. They'll start on the ground with Breda. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because in a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary here go, here guys here to have go. to make a lot of tackles. You're going to see me in your nightmare, son. You're going to see me. And yeah, this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Here we go, here we go. Wait, Amy! Hey, let's get that ball here. Let's get that ball right here. Get From the 39, Garoppolo. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. 54 is Mike. 54 is Mike. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. Come on, 
Cousins now after the fumble recovery. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck to Forrest Buckner. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Michael. 49ers have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. Now a give running right. It's Cook. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. And the 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down go, inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Here we go. Like 20. Here we go. Here we go. They're hot. They're hot. Now it's the fullback. This is Kyle Juszczyk. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. This is Breda. And that gets him a little room as he'll take this up over the 10-yard line. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Get in the white room. Get in the white room. Six guys. Check six guys. <laughs> Garoppolo to throw on third and one. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. So a change of possession here on the punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And now out comes Minnesota. Time here for likely one play, then off to the locker room, and they're going to have some adjustments to make. They certainly will, and I think a lot of people are thinking to themselves, all right, take the knee, get out of here, regroup. But how will the head coach and his staff approach halftime? Will it be angry? Will it be clinical? Will they be calm? Will they just let it all out? Who knows? I'm going to be a fly on the wall for this one, though. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Going to let it fly for Rudolph. And a little floater there is incomplete. 
So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we send you cross-country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down on, at about the 23-yard line. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. While the trainers take a look, We'll step aside. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just, they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive Mike linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and seven, Cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Rudolph on the receiving end from Cousins. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. To throw is Cousins. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively, brings up fourth down. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. But just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Britton Colquitt now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into Come the on, end zone boy, let's go. for a touchback. Let's go. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done. Off. Oh, now Breida loses it. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Garoppolo after the fake give to Brita. Open man is born. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 yards, first down, Niners. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. 
They run again with Breida. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your here best go, go, running play over your best blocker. Oh, you got deep. Set hunt. Set hunt. On third down, a run from Brita. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Throwing on first is Garoppolo. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he's got this down to the 35. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work Shut ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Here we go, now here we they go, need 15 go. yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. Garoppolo going to hand this one to Coleman, and he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now here we go here we go check 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 four check four they stay on the ground again it's coleman Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Throwing now is Garoppolo. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Here we go, here we go, here we go. What do you need? 54, Mike, 54. Let's go, let's go. On play action, now Garoppolo. That is caught at the seven. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. The Niners passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did. And obviously, they liked his measurables. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. On second down, it's Coleman. He gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. Here what we go, do we do? Because hey. now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Everson Griffin coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it also brings up fourth. 
Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility, the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. From the 31, Cousins throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And that takes us from second to third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Cousins. And he finds Cook. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. The heart, lady! Okay, 54 miles. Guys, it's game situation. Let's go. Wait, the heart, heart. Play action now. Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Let's go. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 34-yard line. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Again, it's Cook. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw, Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. 
And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. Cousins now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. And they're not gonna get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. First and 10 right at the 20. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And Diggs has it. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Cousins. And this is Cook with a grab. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. They end up getting stuffed twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to 3. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking here touchdowns here anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. You know, pass complete here to Sanders. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. They'll run with Coleman on first down. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing here we go, here we go, here in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. On second and 12, Garoppolo. Open. 
the man is Samuel, complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 30. Well, a clear running situation, trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. On first down, here's Breida. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Garoppolo. And that's complete to Sanders. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. This is caught. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. From six yards away. And the Niners are able to stretch their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Gold with the extra point, and that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And out now come the Vikings. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Cousins the throw it. Setting up the screen for Cook. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Cousins now from the 50. This is Johnson. He's got it. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 40. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. 
Cousins going to come up on a first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. They'll throw again. Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. That's it, baby. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Cousins again. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Third and short yardage, Cousins. Complete, it's Johnson. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. They'll run with Cook. Hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. Here we go. Garoppolo hey. going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their own 16. They'll begin the drive with Breda. He's got a first down and more past the 30. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Once again, they run with Breed on first down. Anthony Harris on the tackle. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Here we go, here the we last go. run got three. Now here's second and seven. Come on. Come on, D. The Sanders has got it complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 44-yard line. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it, and they got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, go. and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Garoppolo gives to Breda. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Go, Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. You don't want none, baby. You don't want none. Hey, hey, you don't want to see me. You don't want me. Here we go, here we go. Black 80! Six man. Check curls, check curls. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Breda. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team He's going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. They run with Breda, and he loses the football a second time. But call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest go, go, when that go. ball's on the ground. Whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Well, Garoppolo's going to throw it. And that'll be incomplete. 
Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here we go, here we now go. play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. On the handoff, this is Breda. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. And well, they could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The 49ers get the win here at home as we say so long from Santa Clara.